Normality was a fragile thing last Monday in Kyiv. It's unclear whether the missile was part of Ukraine's air defences or was Russian, but thankfully it did not explode. Whatever hit the oil refinery in Krasnodar, Russia last night, though, did go up in flames. The governor of the area said it had been caused by a drone strike. Now, this sort of thing has happened before since the full-scale invasion of Ukraine began. But it does mean that in the last 48 hours, Russia has been hit by a wave of drone attacks. And that is new. The rhetorical fallout from yesterday's strike on Moscow has gone full fever pitch. It started yesterday with the Foreign Secretary James Cleverly in Estonia being asked to react to the drone strikes in Russia. He said Ukraine also have the right to project force beyond its borders, to undermine Russia's ability to project force into Ukraine itself. So legitimate military targets beyond its own border are part of Ukraine's self-defense. Then Dmitry Medvedev, famous for being the Russian president for a term, not so famous for circumspection, lashed out and said British public officials, either military or civil, could be considered as a legitimate military target. Finally, Russian television host Olga Skabeva scaled the hyperbole heights in a bizarre nod to the Salisbury poisonings called for James Cleverly to be impaled on the Salisbury Cathedral Spire. This is all power for course in the Russian media space slash circus, but there's a serious point here too. The increase in attacks on Russian soil, whether border incursions or drone strikes, is being seen as part of a shaping operation ahead of a Ukrainian counteroffensive. The point, to create a feeling of vulnerability and confusion within both the Russian population and its military. The hope that both troops and energy will be diverted. This is changing uh, psychological atmosphere in Kremlin, psychological atmosphere in, in Russian elites, oligarchs, etc. And of course, the uh, population started to understand it kind of uh, not just special military operations somewhere in Ukraine, but something close to them, something uh, dangerous. The Ukrainian counteroffensive is more likely to take the shape of multiple parallel operations probing for vulnerability some of which may already be in play. The big offensive will probably coalesce around places where the Russians turn out to be the weakest. Well, earlier I spoke to Evgeny Popov, an MP for President Putin's United Russia Party and a TV host of the 60 Minutes political news programme. He is married to Olga Skabaeva, who you saw in Porrick's report talking about what she'd like to do to James Cleverly. And I started by asking him if he takes the comments by Medvedev seriously when he says that British officials are now legitimate targets? Actually, uh, Mr. Medvedev is a Russian official and uh, he is one of their... Um, uh, one of, uh, he is uh, in the Security Council of uh, Russia and uh, he's deputy. Uh, uh, of Security Council in Russia, and of course you should take his words uh, and uh, you should think about his words, because uh, um, you allow yourself to say everything about Russia, you want to destroy Russia, you want to attack Russian territory, if you listen carefully, your uh, 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 cleverly, uh, Minister, cleverly, uh, he is allowing to Ukraine to attack Russian civilians' buildings. Yeah. He allowing to Ukraine well, to not, attack actually. Russian I mean, uh, residential area. I mean, it, his words are quite careful as well, in that the British government believes that it is legal for Ukraine to use force outside Ukraine, but on military targets, not on civilian targets. So... These are all sort of carefully calibrated words, aren't they? So, so what I'm saying is, do you believe Mr Medvedev's words are now Russian policy? The British officials will now be targets 
for the Russian military? Hmm. Uh, he didn't say that, but he was um, quite clear that Mr. Cleverly is a legitimate uh, target for uh, Russia because you are supporting terrorist regime. If, if British officials, if you're saying we should take this seriously, the British officials are now regarded as targets, you know, how far does that go? Is that any British official or is it just politicians like Mr. Cleverly? It's uh, uh, a procedure and you are supporting Ukraine and you gave to Ukrainian terrorist regime long range missiles which is uh, killing Russian people every given day. And H if how many you Russian people are dying every day then? You, I mean, you just said something quite interesting that you believe long range missiles are killing Russian people every day. Uh, how many? A lot. You guys, you guys um, destroy uh, 3,000 homes in Belgorod region. It's our historical region. I mean, Britain is quite, you know, the British government is very proud of sending weapons to, to help Ukraine. So, I mean, this is not a, a matter of dispute. And we um, will be proud to fight you, uh, fight you back, guys. Well, well that, that, that uh, is clear. What, what I'm trying to work out is where, where this all goes, because if, if the next I'm step is... You because we're not going to uh, uh, use our nuclear weapons. We're not going to attack you by our planes yeah. or our, I don't know, uh, any other weapon. But, uh, uh, of course, you are the same... Uh, uh, you have the same responsibility as a uh, terrorist regime in Kiev. Do you think this particular exchange that we are seeing now between... Uh, Medvedev and Cleverly, you know, diplomatically. Is it taking this conflict to a new level? Hmm. Uh, I can uh, ask you back. Uh, do you think uh, that uh, uh, transition and uh, fueling uh, uh, Ukraine with a long-range missile is a new level? Of course, it's a new level. You are escalating this conflict. Of course, nobody, nobody in Russia do not want uh, to take part in nuclear war because nobody will win. Yeah, well, no one's talking everybody about nuclear war. Everybody will die. And you should, you must give us security guarantees. Evgeny Popov, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Well, I've also been speaking to Samart Lyle Grant, former UK National Security Advisor and Ambassador to the UN, and I asked him whether he thought all of this was a diplomatic escalation. I don't think so, no. Um, look, there are a number of things to say. The first is that Ukraine has actually denied being involved in some of the drone attacks on, on Moscow, though is uh, less clear about the attacks nearer to uh, the Ukrainian border. But the second point is that when James Cleverly said that it was legal for Ukraine to take, uh, to project force across their borders into Russia in order to protect themselves, he's absolutely right. Because under the UN Charter, Article 51, the right of self-defense, you can project force across the borders if you are uh, under attack. But it's also worth noting that the Foreign Secretary didn't say that he supported such attacks. So I don't think this is a, an escalation of diplomacy or, or rhetoric, really. It's just a reflection of the reality of the sit legal situation. But there is an escalation in terms of actual attacks, isn't there? And, and there's a certain amount of dancing around going on. I mean, saying, well, it, you know, it's, it's, it's only uh, legal if it's military targets. Ukraine doesn't say that they did them, but they probably did, but they just won't admit it. In reality, there is now a drone war going on between Russia and Ukraine, and that's a new phase. To be honest, it's somewhat surprising to me that this hasn't, these sorts of attacks into Russia haven't happened sooner than they have. Um, the reality is that it's Ukraine's allies that have been, has been holding the Ukrainian government back by saying that they mustn't use any Western supplied weapons in order to uh, launch such attacks. But given the devastating bombardment by Russia against civilian and military targets in Ukraine now for something like 
15 months, I don't think it's surprising that the Ukrainians, once they have the capability to hit back, that they take advantage of that. So do you think you should take seriously the Russian threat that British officials have now made themselves targets as a result? Well, I think you should always take seriously uh, Russian threats um, in the sense that they have a history uh, here of, you know, assassinations, poisonings right across Europe, including in the United Kingdom. But it's worth pointing out that when Medvedev said that uh, Britain is in an undeclared war with Russia, that's obviously uh, preposterous. Isn't the point that if Russia thinks, you know, that, that Britain is in an undeclared war, you are in effect in an undeclared war? because they're treating you in that way. Well, the British government, uh, it's true, is at the front of the European pack in giving its political, diplomatic and military support to uh, Ukraine and is comfortable with that position. And indeed, that policy of being at the front of the pack is a, is a bipartisan one supported by all the major parties uh, in Parliament. Now, if as a result of that, Russia wants to uh, particularly single out the United Kingdom, um, then, you know, they will do that, and clearly they are doing that. But certainly Britain is doing less than the, the, than the Americans, even if they're doing more than most of the other Europeans. And is there anything going on at the moment that, that makes you think we are in anything other than still a very long war? No, unfortunately, uh, I think that is the correct conclusion. It's very difficult to see how this conflict ends uh, in the near future. Both sides um, have a strong incentive to keep going. I think for Putin, it's probably existential in terms of his own uh, hold on power. Um, and for Ukrainian President Zelensky, um, he clearly is not going to accept uh, trading land for peace, given the suffering that the Ukrainians have uh, undergone and the success they've had in resisting the military invasion by Russia. So I fear that neither side has that sort of incentive to uh, bring this conflict to an end at this stage.